Good morning, this is Kelly Hobart from Alpaca Direct and I'm here talking this Technique Tuesday about how to make your headbands fit. And I had some fun this week and I knit a few headbands. I'm not really a headband wearer and so when I was thinking about, hmm, what is the first thing I would do if I wanted my headbands to fit? So I don't have headbands in my closet, but I do make them for my daughter, but I send them to her. So I ran in my closet and pulled out hats that I wear, because hats are what I wear. So I figured that if I can make a hat that fits, I can also make headbands that fit. And if you look like this here, this is a, a hat that I had made and it's brand new. And this is a hat that I made and I've worn several years. And they're both made from ultra, um, actually baby alpaca, right? And so we know that when we look at baby alpaca, it's going to stretch because it doesn't have very many barbs on the actual fiber itself. And so there's not much to hold it together. It's not like a normal wool. That's why it's so much softer um, than some wools are. So um, I, the first thing I wanted to do is take out my tape measure so that I could show you um, the measurements that I use for my hat when I make a hat. First thing you do when you do your hats or headbands is you would measure. So you get this measurement and I'm right at 22 inches. So if you look at headwear sizing chart, you can see the size that you need for your, for your hat size. So, um, Usually, this seems like a little bit small. This hat sizing says seven to seven and an eighth. Now, if they're talking about when it's laying flat and you're measuring it across, um, on this one that's been stretched out, it's 10 inches. But if you look at it on my head, it is pretty loose. It's kind of baggy, but I kind of like that. I mean, some people really like baggy hats and because they feel good on their head and um, if they don't squish your hair too much they don't give you the bedhead look on your hair so some people really like a wide hat so when i when i am making a hat for someone some of the first things i ask are what are the dimensions around your head and then the next question i ask is would you like your when you wear your hats or your headbands do you like them tight or do you like them loose? Some people like them really tight because they're doing, they're very active and they're afraid that their headband would fall off. And so you need to know that information when you're constructing one for yourself or for loved ones. And the easiest way for you to know that is ask them, you know, do you like your hats tight or loose? Do you like your headbands tight or loose? And then they'll tell you. And then that tells you how much stretch you want to have in your headband. Several people said they like them loose. Yes, a lot of people like them loose. I don't like them loose. If I if I was to wear this hat and go out horseback riding, it would fall off my head. Or if I'm on the ski um, skiing, then um, it's I'm continuously going to be adjusting my hat. Where this one stays on my head really really well. So if you look at this one. It fits kind of tight on my head, but I like it because I can wiggle and move and run and it stays on my head. And see, my head is 22 inches and this hat is eight inches. So they're saying, um, norm, uh, a lot of standards say, make your hat two inches less for stretch. So if you had a 22 inch head, you would make it 10 inches across. But, I don't know. For me, I like it tighter. So I, uh, on this one, if I'm following this one, it's an eight inch across. So eight, eight, that's um, 16 inches to 22. That's a, quite a bit of room for stretch. But you also have to realize that this headband, if it had not been made out of ribbing, which is very, very stretchy, right? You can get stretchiness from the yarn, but you can also get stretchiness from the type of stitch that you use. If this hat had been made out of stockinette stitch and it was um, like this little headband, just stockinette stitch, 
you're not gonna get the same stretchiness out of it. You might get an inch of stretchiness. So for if I was knitting something like this, I would make it very close to the size of my head. I would make it, then I would make it 10 inches. So this one is um, nine inches. It fits my head. I could go up another um, inch or so and it would fit even better. It's a little bit snug, but this is made out of alpaca and remember, alpaca stretches over time. So you always gotta think about a multitude of things when you're knitting. Um, number one, if it's alpaca, it's gonna stretch more than other fibers. So it, this, that's why I like this ultra alpaca chunky because it's 50% alpaca, 50% wool. And what you get when you make a product out of this is something that stretches a little bit less it's, uh, it's got the durability of the wool and the warmth of the alpaca. This ultra alpaca is good for mittens. So I have ultra alpaca here and I've made mittens out of it. So it's um, a workhorse yarn. It's a yarn that'll wear and tear. So these I've worn and worn and worn. And if you look at them on my hands, I can guarantee you they were looser, uh, uh, tighter than that when I made them. But they still fit me really well and I have wore the daylights out of these. And they almost felted just a little bit, but they're, oh, what I love, I don't know if you guys have tried alpaca yarns or ultra alpaca for mittens or gloves. Um, they're super lightweight on your hands, so they feel light on your hands, but you get a tremendous amount of warmth, right Jim? Yeah, tell me about my North Face gloves when I yeah, tried so, them. Yeah, um, so uh, Jim had a pair of North Face gloves the other night, and he's walking around our circle. And it was about, was it about 15 degrees? Something, or something yeah. like that. Cold. Mm -hmm. Something like that. It was pretty darn cold. And he said, oh, my hands are so cold. And I'm sitting here thinking, my hands aren't cold. So I said, just put my gloves on. And he said, oh, I don't want to wear. I'm like, seriously, just try them on. So we switched gloves, and I took his, and he took mine. And we put the, he put them on. And what did you think of them, Jim? Well, yours were, what were they, ultra alpaca? It was ultra alpaca, yeah. yeah they were warm. Mm -hmm very warm and very light right yeah I thought they're so thin they're not going to be warm but they were yeah you would think the air would go through them but it actually doesn't and you get this um, a glove or a mitten whatever you make out of it that's super warm and lightweight so it's totally awesome so when you're making headbands keep this product in mind it's a great product to use and I um, so when you're doing the headwear chart, the reason why I wanted to print this out and show it to you again is that online, if you don't know your loved one's head size, you can just Google it. What is normal size for a newborn infant's head? It's 14 inches, right? So I always make my hats maybe 13 inches or something for a baby. And um, a couple other things you wanna think about when you're doing headbands and hats if you look at this hat right here, the bottom of it, I knit on a smaller needle size than the top. And you can go one needle size down or two needle sizes down, dep depending on what you're gonna use and how many stitches you're gonna use. But for, especially when you're doing ribbing, do make the bottom with a tighter gauge because you'll get a product that is, um, well, it's usable. It's more functional that way. So this was a little hat that I made for Evie that I just made it up with these cute little ear flaps on it. But anyway, so that is what I um, made for a little baby. And let's get back to our headbands. So I have also another thing you might wanna ask people when you're doing your headbands, or if you don't have a headband around to measure, you can do one of two things. You can take the measurement that is from the bottom of your ear up to where you might want your headband to sit and then just put your finger on there and say I would make my head headband no more than about five inches so if you get it any more than five inches it's not going to fit on my head so I made this one this is calometry um, headband pattern from Ravelry and um, so I made it that wide and this is made out of the ultra alpaca chunky um, I'm going to show you something about what I did on this. That's why I have the needle sitting there still. But if you look at it, it's 18 and a half inches. So it's about right on par. If I look at this one, which I said was a little bit tight, it's eight inches. 
This one is just a little bit longer than that. It's like two inches longer. So this one's gonna be wonderful. Now remember, you get stretch from the stitch that you use. So if you're using ribbing, and the most stretch that you can get is from one by one ribbing. And then the more knit stitches and more purl stitches, the more like three by three ribbing would be less um, stretch than a two by two ribbing. And two by two ribbing is less stretch than a one by one ribbing. So just keeping that in mind when you're doing your projects. Also, don't forget when you're doing headbands, what I like to do when I cast on for any project, whether it's a hat or a headband or a sweater or a sleeve or anything, um, an easy way to make sure that the edges are remain flexible and stretchy is to cast on with a needle one size larger and then knit right off of that onto the needle that you're gonna be using for your knitting. So as we're going along, don't forget to share with your friends and push that like, but like button um, so that we can all learn together. And don't forget to post comments in the comment section so that you may be entered to win because every week we have a prize. And we love to know where you're from. So if you can let us know where you're from, maybe you have snow there. <laughs> and don't forget to let us know what projects you're working on because we love getting new ideas for Technique Tuesday or a lot of our um, knitters will share patterns and then we all get on board and we all start making it. <laughs> so there's a question, <laughs> can you use Ultra totally Alpaca fun. for socks? Yes, oh yes, oh yes. See these three different colors? These are the colors that I'm using right now. And I wanted to show you this little thing, it's so cool. So this is Plymouth Grande, 100% baby alpaca. And we know that baby alpaca stretches, but it still makes a lovely hat. Now what I wouldn't use it for is mittens or gloves or fingerless mitts because it's going to, um, it's going to fall apart too easily. Something that you need for wear and tear is ultra alpaca. So if you look at these two colorways, see this is Plymouth 100% baby alpaca number 835. And this is ultra alpaca chunky, which is perfect for mittens, gloves, or fingerless mitts. So you could buy one skein of the 835 and then the 7283 in ultra alpaca chunky, it, they almost look like the same yarn, but the good part is this is good for this is good for headwear, the baby alpaca, and this is good for um, hands, feet, all that kind of stuff. So I totally would make chunky weight um, socks out of ultra alpaca. Matter of fact, that's what we're going to be talking about next week. We're going to be talking about the double knitting without double knitting, and we're going to make it into socks for bed socks. And this would be great for that. Now, you know when you take care of these things, all I do is wash it in the sink with a little bit of baby magic in cool to warm water, not hot, and not a ton of agitation because it'll, it'll felt like a Dickens, which means it'll turn like this and the fabric becomes very stiff. And you don't want your lovely project to become stiff. So remember, hand washing, <laughs> gentle, um, be gentle with it. So the headband that I made today was called this Callison headband and it's by the Bracco design team and it is on our website, right Jen? Yeah, we have a link. Yes, oh it's so awesome and you can't see my colorways. Now when I'm making my headbands, you know, making headbands with your little bits and scraps that you have left over is perfect because you use up your odds and ends. It makes a great gift. So this was extra yarn that I had and I made this headband. And if you can see, my, oops, sorry, my seed stitch on the edge is not quite as wide because I didn't want my headband to be super, super wide. And this is still damp. And I wanted to show you how to seam this together. Um, so that it looks really good because if you look at this little headband and you look right here in particular um, they just kind of whip stitched it or something I don't know what they did but they didn't take a lot of care in their seaming and if you use mattress stitch and you learn how to do it properly and you take your time now anyone can be in a hurry and kind of flub something up or if you're tired that's not a great time to do finish work when you're tired because you'll mess it up too. But if you look here, I did the mattress stitch all the way along here. And do you see it completely mimics the actual stitches? And then I kept my gauge nice and loose by going like this and 
pulling it out and making sure that it stayed loose so that it, it's as minimal as can be. And that's the inside of the headband. This is just a super um, plain headband. Uh, sometimes plain hand headbands are good because they match with our coats and jackets. And if you're giving them as gifts and you don't know if someone will, you know, what color their jacket is or what they're going to like, plain is good. It's good. Um, so another pattern um, that I had, and I haven't done this one yet, but it is a free pattern on Alpaca Direct. It's called Pralines, and it's actually a crocheted pattern, and it's doing a simple cabling. <laughs> and so I thought that was pretty cute because you know how I like cables. So that was totally awesome. So I wanted to go over my list real quick for our how to make the headband that fits, right? And I, as I said before, don't forget to run to your closet pull out the things that you wear and start measuring them. And then take that tape measure while you have it and measure from the bottom of your ear so you can see exactly where you would like your headband. Because if you get the, a headband made perfectly just for you, that's so cool. It's totally cool. I mean, you can't always buy or find something. I don't know if, you, I, I have tried to buy headbands before and it's extremely difficult, but knitting them is really quick, right Jim? Because mm -hmm. that this pattern that I did last night, that took me less than two hours, right? Yeah. It was super quick because it's a chunky weight yarn. And so um, that was a super quick knit. Now, um, we already talked about the dimensions, our length and our width. Also, when you're knitting, don't forget to, as you're knitting along, what I do with my knitting is I take it and pull it because alpaca is going to stretch. So I want to see how far is this going to stretch, right? And then I would measure it. And so you, what you don't want to do is not pull it at all and then find it when it comes out of the sink. See how this is 10 and a half inches? It's going to fit me perfectly. <laughs> It's perfect on my head for a headband. And the reason why 10 and a half inches is really good for this is because cables don't have a lot of stretch in them. So as we learn about the different stitches, like lace really opens up and lays out, but cables constrict in and make everything tighter. So just keeping those little things in mind as you're knitting your projects will help them turn out better. And um, don't be afraid also when you're knitting, if you pre-block. What I like to do a lot of times, and you'll hear me talking about it, is when I'm knitting a project and I'm not sure if it's gonna fit or what it's gonna do, what do I do, Jim? I take the needles and all and dump them in the sink, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I get it wet and I lay it out flat and then I measure it. I'm like, is it still good or do we need to make changes? And don't forget if you're knitting, and it's not turning out the way that you want, don't keep knitting until you're done. Take it out and start over. Change, add four stitches or add eight stitches or take eight stitches away, whatever the problem is. You know, um, don't be afraid to change it. Make it so it's perfect. <laughs> I mean, it's all in the details. That's why stuff looks so great when you really, really put your effort. Really just common sense thinking about things, you know. And I know a lot of times on these headbands and hats and stuff, we're knitting them on 16 inch needles and you're like, well, I can't really put it on my head. Well, separate it. Get one of your sock needles out that have a nice long cord and take a bunch of stitches off and put it on that sock needle and then try it on your head, right, Jim? He, Jim laughs at me because I'm working on hats and my needles are hanging off the back of my head as I'm walking around the house trying to see if I like the feel of it. <laughs> right, Jim? It looks kind of dangerous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it, it's, it, I, you know, I, I spend enough time making these things. I want them to be right when I'm done. And so maybe I'm a little more nitpicky than I should be, but I really do feel like it's all in the details. So anyways, um, oh yes, Tara wanted me to show you these. And oh, these are so cute. Do you see these? Can you show them on the thing? Oh yeah. Shawl pins? Yeah. I, th I think I knocked it off. Okay. These are made from brass, and we just got them in at Alpaca Direct, and they make great little gifts. So we have um, the little shiny ones. And they're and attached, these too. These are little bees. Show them how they're attached. And then, well, this one right here is attached, so it doesn't fall off. So you can have it hooked into your project. Why don't you and turn then... it toward me so they can... Oh, sorry, sweetheart. Yeah. They're just so cute. I love these. Make great little gift ideas. Yeah, Tara found those and she's so excited about them, so I figured I'd share with you. So let's talk about 
just for one second, Jim. So for this last week, we had um, two different colorways. We always let you guys choose the color when we can possibly do that. And uh, we had the rose color and it's mauve. this one yeah. is mm -hmm. huh? mauve, actually. But yeah. um, mauve, mm -hmm. okay. And then this is Naughty Lumberjack, I think. Mm -hmm. And I think the price for this week was this one. Mm -hmm. And then for um, uh, this week, we are going to be doing Ultra Alpaca Chunky. Now, I was thinking we could do the light purple or this darker, almost like a burgundy tea, burgundy-ish color. Um, but this ultra alpaca would make great um, mittens. Why don't you hold them up like so that. they can vote? So light purple yeah. and dark purple, or what is it? Um, I don't know. This is wine. How about wine and purple? Wine and purple. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, those are totally beautiful. And then all you have to do is you post comments in the comment section and you're entered to win. And then if you win, all we have ask is that you give us your shipping address so that we can send the yarn into you. And it comes just like this in, in its own brand new skein so that you have your own. And you can give the yarn a try and see why we like it so much. So I wanted to just take one second and touch, show, come over here so we can take a look at the different skills. Um, what I'm talking about right now is I'm seaming this little headband and I don't want it to be really bulky at the back of the head and I, nor do I want my seam to be um, so thick on the back here that um, it looks funny. So I'm going along as I'm doing it and kind of making sure that my tension is good and then I've already started this and so what you do is you're going back and forth from the right side to the left side left side to the right side and you're just picking up you're looking for a V what are a you showing stitch. here called this the... is called the mattress stitch okay. and it's super easy to do if you see right here this is my yarn that is coming out of so I go right into where I came out of and if you see right here that is a full stitch right there so you just go right into that right on the very edge of your work and then you can either leave it loose and then pull it tight or you can pull it tight all at once. What I would venture to say is just make sure that your tension is about the tension of your knitting. You don't want it to be super, super tight and you don't want it to be super, super loose. So if you look right here, this is where my other strand of yarn came out of on that side. So I go always into where I came out of and then just grab one more stitch. So I would grab one more stitch and you just tighten it up. Then you go back over. I can take my needle at the very end and get the tension exactly perfect. If you tighten it too much in the beginning, you can't see what you're doing and you end up um, making it too tight. So you're just going back and forth, going into where you came out of and seaming it up. And you notice that I have the right side of my work showing right so the right side of your work is showing and you just go all the way up to the end back and forth and this is my favorite I think I like it better I, I don't usually use whip stitch I find that uh, whip stitch is um, it doesn't look quite as nice so I like this technique but you got to find what works for you and I would say it is all in the detail so just make sure that when you're doing it you do the best job that you can do and if it doesn't look right, take it out and try it again. Because sometimes, you know, uh, we do better when we try it the second time. So I'm trying to figure out how to get this in here, but I don't want that. There. See? So now it is seamed. And I'm going to go back through with my needle and make sure it's perfect. But we have our cables here. And here's the front of it super super cute and this is what it looks like when it's just on stockinette stitch yeah okay. and here we are with our here's our other this is called, called the caliometry headband and what I've done here I wanted to show you a couple things here so when I was doing this I like to use a backer button and can you hand me that little package right there Jim you can find them at Joann's or any store and they're just called shirt buttons and by putting a button on the back, it stabilizes this button as well as the fabric. So the fabric doesn't get that stretched or pulled look that you see sometimes in projects. And then what I did is I wove in, this was my tail from my uh, 
beginning edge and then um, I got I wove in some my ends see I went right down here and then I split the plies in half so this was a two ply yarn Jim can you hand me one of my um, my those Thanks. cakes so if you have to split the plies in your project an easy way to do it is you would and the reason why you split the plies is because you want the yarn to be thinner so that it'll fit through the eye of the needle. If you have the, um, if you're going through these buttons right here, you have to have a really tiny, see how small this needle is? It's a sewing needle. It has to be very small or otherwise it won't go through those shirt buttons. But it's worth it and you just split the plies and then you can get it on there no problem. And then when I, what I mean by splitting the ply, this is a two ply yarn. I would start near the top, maybe a down an inch and you just grab it and you pull. You see how it split? And then you go down a little bit further and you grab those two, you kind of get the needle in between the two and you pull. Do you see how that splits the ply? So that when you're working, you can weave in the ends and or you can get it threaded onto your small needle if you're using that backer button. Also, I wanted to show you that when you're doing your tails and you're working with your projects, you can strengthen the edge of your actual headband by doing going through and mimicking your stitches. So it's um, duplicate stitch. So what are you doing here? It's um, using duplicate stitch to um, strengthen the outer edge of your headband right here where the actual button's going to be go going over the top and it can get funky looking or be not very sturdy or strong. Mm -hmm. But you can strengthen it and all you do is you go, you do duplicate stitch. And duplicate stitches, you go underneath the V's and then you can come back up. And again, when you're doing it, you don't want to do it tight. You want it to be loose, but you see how I'm going under the two legs of that next stitch? And then I go right in here where I came out of. and go to the next stitch and just keep doing that over and over for as long as you want to. If your tension gets too tight, you can always just loosen it up a little. But you can strengthen your headband by using your tail. I'll show you that one more time. So you would insert, see here's the stitch right here. So you're gonna go behind that and hook that on there and then go up. And that, that you can use to strengthen. You see how the edges are already more substantial and sturdy? So that's how you can strengthen the edges of your headband so that when you use it over time, it doesn't start fraying or falling apart. And you want to but, see the back of that button again once more. The rear, yeah, the back yes, of the absolutely. Yeah. It's a backer button and you use it on both sides. And what it does is it stabilizes this button so it's hook to it really really well and when you get ready where you've done it you know a couple of times you can go through the back here and then you can actually wrap it like this and then what I like to do is I like to Go in here. What are you doing here? I'm just um, taking my working yarn and getting it out of the way. There you go. And then you can, um, I would bring that back. I know you don't have to, but I would bring this back through the back side and weave it in a little bit more and then cut it. And then you would be ready to go. I would bring it right in through that, like that. And there you go. That's how cute that is, and it's nice and stable. So, anyways, um, making headbands is, or hats that fit, is really not super, super hard. 
It's you're looking at the fiber, you're measuring your head, you're looking in your closet, or having your loved ones look in their closet and have them measure how big is your hat, what is it made out of, what do you like, and then you create what they like, and that way they'll use it. <laughs> Don't you think? <laughs> what was the you was so. the the thing you talked about was check engage memory. I don't know if you mentioned that. Like you, you would always make a little piece of it first. Yes. Well, when I'm knitting along, a lot of times, don't you think, Jim, I'm checking gauge by actually starting the project. I begin. And then I, I'll knit like three rows on whatever I'm doing. And, or maybe five or six. And then I will put it on a separate needle and actually take out that tape measure and measure it. Because I'm starting to get some dimensions by then by about five or six um, rows or rounds into it, I've got a pretty good idea of what it's like. And so then, if it's not the way I like it, like last night I was doing this headband, and I was doing all the stitches with all the seed stitch on both ends, and it was gonna be about six inches wide, and I had like, I had the needle size that they recommended, it was a size 10 needle, and it was just super, it was like six inches wide, and, and the fabric was kind of sloppy, it was very uh, kind of loose looking what I was doing and so I thought no I want to tighten it up because I want to wear it because I want to keep warm right so I, I tightened it up I put it on a number eight needle and took off um, one one knit one pearl one from each side of it and then it's perfect <laughs> I like it <laughs> so it's like yes that'll work so don't be afraid to experiment and if something if you like something else just insert what you like into it. I mean, you know, who's to say this hat, I can just put cables on it very easily. Um, so don't be afraid, you know, just try it, try something new. It's totally exciting when you try something new and you realize that you have created something that no one else on this earth has what you have and it looks beautiful. And so I just love learning new skills. So the way that I learn new skills is to pick three projects in that skill, no more than two new skills at once, and practice one hour daily. So it's the three, two, one rule that I use. So if you guys just keep that in mind as you're going along, um, I wanted to make sure that when we make our headbands that fit, we do our tape measuring. Um, we pay attention to what they're gonna be made out of, knowing that alpaca is gonna stretch. Um, and make sure when you're doing your projects, if you're a beginning knitter, I cannot recommend highly enough to get a notebook and write stuff down. Write what the pattern was, what the yarn was, what the color number was, um, how you changed it, any problems that you had, and maybe suggestions for yourself that you, if you make this again, I'm gonna do this. And that way you'll be surprised how often you refer back to that for your projects. And um, just a simple thing like this. This hat, I know it's 66 stitches to start with and it's a chunky weight alpaca. So for me, that's my standard. I always know that I'm gonna be using, if I use a chunky weight alpaca, I'm gonna be using right around 66 stitches or so. I can change it a little bit um, by changing my needle size or um, what have you, but for me, that is the stitch count that I use. And if I hadn't wrote, written it down and, and memorized it, then I wouldn't have that information. But as usual, I keep track of all this stuff. <laughs> I probably drag my husband crazy. <laughs> and I told you before that um, most, um, if you look at recommendations, they'll say allow at least two inches for stretch. And I would venture to say maybe a little bit more if you're using alpaca. So for mine, I l allowed up to four inches of stretch, but then it stretches out beautifully and looks gorgeous. Um, so um, I'm looking on here. Yes. Um, also, I wanted to remind you that if you are making a headband and you make it with buttons, this, you could, I could put two buttons on here if I wanted to and make it a lot smaller. So if you made a project and it's a little bit too big, think about, and it's this type of headbands, think about putting two buttons on it. So then you have some adjustability in your work. So that's always something to think about too. So having those adjustable headbands, instead of just having a ring that is one solid piece, um, 
this is wonderful because you don't have to worry about buttons. So I guess every everything has its pros and cons. <laughs> but um, and I also like headbands um, in the back that are narrower because they don't get in the way of your hair. <laughs> so that is something that I like. And um, let's go on to our prize winner for our. Uh, Why don't you mention our socks? Week. Oh yes, of course. Yeah. Hey, you guys, if any of you are cold out there, this is my favorite socks. They're called the Extreme Boot Sock. And they have full terry throughout the whole sock. And if you look on the inside, they make great Christmas gifts. I don't know if you have tried alpaca socks. <laughs> They're heaven for your feet. So I have, well, I always wear alpaca socks, but I totally love these extreme boot socks. And we have them on Alpaca Direct for sale. We just put them on sale today, too. So. Oh, you did? Yeah. Ah, you guys, I love a sale. <laughs> That's awesome. Run and grab those while you can because they sell out fast. And we sold out of a lot of colors already. Um, so for the prize winner for this week, I guess um, you guys chose this rose color, Rose Garden. And the winner is Rachel Condora. And Rachel, you won this lovely yarn. This is our Coeur d'Alene yarn, and it is made with 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere, and 10% nylon. And that's Sasquatch, right? Yes, it's called Sasquatch. And what I love about this yarn is we had the colors, so they kind of coordinate with each other. So for instance, if I was gonna choose um, that one, see how beautiful they match together? We had them dyed on purpose so that they match each other. Okay, so you, um, you can feel pretty confident that um, you're picking colors. Do you see how pretty? <laughs> okay, so I love this yarn. I'm making a beautiful sweater with it, and um, I need to get on the ball and get, get that finished, but it's a gorgeous yarn. If you haven't tried it yet, try it. That's on alpacadirect.com. Um, for this week, I said we have this yarn. No, the, the, this one and this oh, one. sorry the wine color, and then the purple. In um, Ultra Alpaca Chunky, you know it's one of my favorite yarns. Too. So wine or purple? So wine or purple. So you guys help us vote on that. Hold it up one more and time. See it? I wasn't sure. pointing. So you can see it. Awesome. Beautiful, beautiful yarn. And like I said, Rachel won this lovely yarn. So Rachel, get in contact with customer service so we can send your lovely yarn in the mail. You can either make a shawl with it or you can make socks. I mean, you can make a hat. You can make a lot of things with this yarn. How many it's yards totally are in it? Is there one I hat? think it's over 400. Yep, 450 yards. It's wonderful. I like this yarn. Super soft, super nice. And I hope this helped you be able to make headbands that fit. And don't be afraid to experiment. And don't be afraid to try something new. So I hope you have a great week. And next week, I am going to be talking about uh, double knitting stitch without double knitting and how we might use that in different ways. So I hope you have a great week and I will see you next Tuesday. My finished button isn't working here. <laughs>